we're going to be talking about the plot diagram. Now, you may have seen this diagram before. It looks a little bit like a triangle or a mountain, and it kind of shows how the plot unfolds over the course of a story. I know there are a lot of videos out there that go through it for kids that have never seen it before using examples from children's books or fairy tales. We're not going to do that in this video. In fact, the example I'm going to be using is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, so if you are a young kid who is looking for an introduction to the plot diagram, you might want to look elsewhere. But if you're maybe a high school student who needs a refresher on it, this is the video for you. So the plot diagram basically just shows how the plot of a story works, where it starts off, how it builds up over the course of the story, and how it finishes. The first step on the plot diagram is exposition. The exposition is also sometimes called the introduction. That's where things like the characters and the setting are introduced. You might also get a feel for what the premise of the story or the basic idea of the plot might be, although a lot will happen after the exposition or introduction that will give you more information about that. After the exposition, there's usually some sort of an event that will get the story going, sometimes known as a catalyst or an inciting incident, and this will lead into the rising action. The rising action makes up the vast majority of the story. That will just be anything that happens, usually with increasing importance and tension as we go closer to the end of the book. And then it all builds up to the climax, which is a turning point where the major conflict of the story is resolved. The climax will usually happen pretty close to the end of the book, but it's not the end. Afterwards, there will be what's called the falling action, which shows kind of how everything gets wrapped up, any fallout from what happened in the climax, and tying up any loose ends. And then finally, the last part of the story will be the resolution, sometimes also known as the denouement, which will tie up the loose ends, possibly provide a hook for the sequel if there is one, and just generally wrap everything up. So using The Hunger Games as our example, the exposition or introduction is just everything that takes place up until the reaping. We're introduced to Katniss, her family, Gale, and the setting of District 12. We learn a little bit about the Hunger Games, the upcoming reaping, and then the reaping is the inciting incident or catalyst that moves us forward into the rising action. After the reaping, Katniss's life will never be the same again. She knows that she's been chosen to participate in the Hunger Games. She knows there's a slim chance that she'll survive and come back home. She at that point goes to the capital and she has to participate in all of these events like the chariot ride and the interviews and everything leading up to being sent into the arena. Her time in the arena is also part of the rising action. And you see how, like I said earlier, things become increasingly intense and more significant. What happened when Katniss first arrived in the capital is still a big deal, but it's much less of a big deal than the moments when her life is in danger in the arena. The climax would be how the event The Hunger Games actually ends with Cato's death and Katniss and Peeta being told that they can't both be joint victors and the incident with the poisoned berries and then eventually them being declared joint victors. And then the following action is what happens afterwards, because the story doesn't end as soon as they're both declared Hunger Games victors. We find out afterwards that President Snow is not happy about the stunt that they pulled in the arena. They have to do the interview and they have to make it seem as if they were not trying to rebel against the Capitol, but just madly in love with each other. They go on the train ride home to District 12, and that's where you would have the denouement or resolution, which would be as they're on the train home to District 12 and all of a sudden all of the media presence where they have to be aware of all of their actions and words is gone and they're going back to their ordinary lives, but of course not in the same way. So I know that the plot diagram is something that a lot of people see year after year after year in school and it can become a little bit boring and routine, but I think it is a very useful tool for looking at the structure of your typical novel or stories in general, not just novels, because movies usually follow this as well and short stories follow this. In any case, I hope that this video was helpful for either refreshing your memory about the plot diagram or helping you to understand it a little bit better. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays, and I talk about reading, writing, classic literature, literary concepts and devices, college tips, study tips, and more.